Everybody, welcome back to Northern Land Plays, The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. 26 wins in a row. Hit the space bar and free my soul. If we get the keeper, then I will roll a... I, I didn't have a line for it, but here we are. A-H-N-A-4-L-3-M. <laughs> this is the first Spiced run. We've had uh, from the start in a while. It's not to say we haven't had runs with a degree of spice. Whether a, a Tabasco, a Cholula, a Tapatio, a De Bomb, or perhaps even just a ketchup, you know? Wow. But I take solace in uh, a few things as the keeper. One of the things I take solace in is, ooh, be careful. It's all right. That's why you leave the penny back there. Shouldn't have done this just in case there were some enemies. But I take solace in the fact that the keeper is as close to an algorithm as you can get with any character in this game. Basically, as the keeper, you're you're just a simple machine executing instructions and you might say depending on your views on the human mind that's all we are at any given time but like the keeper is is even more cut and dry like the best behavior to as the keeper is so obviously derivable that in some ways it's almost like it's not even me playing the run you know the machine is playing the run right now by the way can i tell you i think there is a situation Though unlikely, where I might consider picking up blank card. And the Empress is not the is not the way forward there. However, if we got like enough and it would take a lot. If we got enough uh charge augments, like you know, car battery, for example, we might as well peep this. Fanny pack can be pretty good if we can get the money, but it is somewhat unlikely, even with this nickel. Um, but, you know, car battery, 9-volt, triple-A battery, that sort of stuff, plus, like, a justice card, I would consider, I think. Because, you gotta remember, maybe you, maybe you don't feel like you have to remember, but, it might take longer to charge blank card, well, I mean, it would take longer to charge blank card, however, you would also... Um, get a guaranteed payout instead of a percentage-based payout. So, that being said, uh, let's be realistic. The odds of this are not very likely at the present moment. This is an incredibly cursed uh, boss room to be the keeper. <laughs> it This sucks really badly. Um, but we've made it through and uh, I get, just allow me... To uh, issue a very hearty thank you to, uh, excuse me, where did my money go? To the uh, Empress card, which uh, saved us a great deal of strife there. Thank you, Empress card. Much appreciated. So we will be abandoning blank card. We can't afford fanny pack and we can't really get, uh, can't really get a reroll. If we wanted to get spicy, we could... Just a waste of everybody's time, really. When, when you when you really distill it down to brass tacks, just a complete disrespect for other people's time. Um, we could reroll and potentially like try to get to um, you know a seven cent item. I don't think that's a good use of our money. I think that's that's a, a very poor use of our limited financial resources. Anyway, everything's going just fine. Sorry, I got distracted because, like, from my door, I can see the cat's water dish. And there is no more blessed sight than watching Tomo drink some water. It doesn't even look like his tongue is touching any water. It's so fast. You, you gotta hit that in slow-mo to actually appreciate it. But he's so happy when he's doing it. He's like, you know, he's just loving life. That That's his Isaac, is drinking from the water dish. It's a beautiful sight. He's so happy. We should all be so happy as to appreciate a readily available source of clean water. 
Not everybody on Earth has it. Realistically, though, I'll level with you if you're watching this Isaac episode, you probably do. You got a computer and an internet connect. I mean, you know, you might live in a part of the world where your water is uh, unpalatable or perhaps even, like, not safe to drink from the taps, but... I've been there. Since it, like, actually been there. Like, in Korea, they tell you not to drink the tap water. It was always funny, too, like, if you told someone, like, a, a Korean person in Korea that you drank the tap water, they would look at you like you were about to grow a second head. The only people who drank tap water were people from other countries who came there and are like, I don't believe that the tap water is not, <laughs> not acceptable to drink. And I'm like, eh. I do, uh, trust me. I, even in 2011, so, you know, it's almost a decade ago, it's not like people were ignorant of the environmental effects of bottled water, but I was also like, I really don't want to get sick. So, let's, uh, let's drink some bottled water. It had to be done. In, in North America, I mean, I can't think of the last time I purchased a bottle of water. It was probably at a theme park. That being said, I, do you, you guys ever think it's funny? I, I think about this now and then. Um, since we can't reroll, I think we will use this, but I'm thinking, and honestly, I think we want... I, I have a couple of different ideas for this. One is a free deal with the devil if we're comfortable fighting the boss without using our coin. The other one is we could use it in the shop for one of those incredible, you know, shop items like Piggy Bank that would really take us to the next level. But I think, and this is modestly spiced, without a doubt, I think we should try to bring it in. Um, I, I support this idea. Yeah, okay, let's give it a, let's give it a try. I was thinking about buying a bomb, just so we have a bomb for the boss. Let's just hope it's not a super tough boss. Okay, that, that, that is totally acceptable. Um, but like, I will... I'll never buy a bottle of water. And if someone tells me like, oh, I'm buying bottled water. I'm like, what do you hate planet Earth? But I will on occasion buy a bottle of juice or soda. <laughs> Even though it's functionally like... Uh, you know, exactly the same thing. Oh, baby! <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yes. Yes. Alright, this is very interesting. So I do want to start by saying... This is not necessarily great, because now if we get hit once, we're guaranteed to lose a life. However... I know we're leaving a coin behind as well. All we need is a one health upgrade, and this run is in a pretty great spot. And we did get a nice uh, damage upgrade. We... Okay. Fair. Run! Let's be honest, that room's busted to begin with. The thing is, why, why take uh, ceremonial robes? Because whether or not we took ceremonial robes... Um, we were going to, uh, be on 1 HP after taking 9 lives, so... Might as well have grabbed it. I was, I was kind of beating myself up over it a little bit, and then I was like, why am I beating myself up over it? There's no, no reason to fear. So, uh, certainly getting an HP upgrade. I don't mind, uh, fighting greed, so I'll keep that going. Getting an HP upgrade is of the most, uh, pivotal importance. I gotta say, I think that... Uh, gift play in the shop was a, a stroke of, I, I will almost never say this in Isaac, about myself especially. I think that was basically a stroke of genius. We might as well, there's no benefit to saving it, but we do want, um, Nun's Habit. Because if we get HP, we'll, we, we've got a very stacked defensive run, let me put it that way. If we're able to get HP... Um, and then Nun's Habit, we got a really, really solid setup. So I, I don't know, like, when I say a stroke of genius, I don't mean I'm a genius for doing it, but coming up with that in the moment was, was very, very good. And to be honest, like, in terms of the, 
Like, how often do I make an Isaac play that's as critical as that to the success of a run? Probably, like, once every 200 episodes, let's say. Just off the top of my head. I'd say, like, once every six months. We, we, we do something that's at that level. So, that, for me, that was a big one. Alright, so this is not the most annoying boss in the game, but it's... You know, what percentage of the time do we get hit, uh... Once? Or more, I suppose. Um, I don't know, probably like 15 to 25 percent of the time. Looks like we've dodged that fate. We did not get HP, but we are close to spun, and the damage upgrade is of course just great as is. Um, we also did not get a deal with the devil, however... I think that's a perfect opportunity to use the Joker card, and then you decide what's worth it for you. I will definitely sack a life to get a speed and uh, a speed upgrade and the ability to fly. I think that's uh, probably you know close to the highest value trade I could get in my entire Isaac life right now. But every every life in our current world here is very meaningful because we don't know. Which one is going to be one too many? You know what I mean? You know, we don't... The most valuable life is the one you win on. If you pick up nine lives and you, you finish the run with eight, did you need nine lives? No, you might be stoked to have it, but you didn't need it necessarily. Uh, and I think we should go for this, actually, because... We have a fairly good shop on this floor, I th ooh, because of the existence of the reroll machine. So I, I think this is a good time to, to press our advantages. I mean, we're compared to the average run, we're overpowered right now, except for the fact that our HP is so tough to renew. So I, I think this is a great time to... Oh my god, so lucky on those two. It's a great time to lean into that and, and try to take it even a step further. Uh, I think we want to be able to open golden chests. Our key setup is pretty solid. And we're... I, I mean, again, I'm tooting my own horn. I think we've done a great job of... Uh, of doing what's right on a keeper run right here. I'm feeling good. The only thing we need to do is find a way to extract one HP upgrade from the system. We can get it from the shop. It'll, it's a roundabout way. We would need to get like chaos and then still have the resources necessary to pick up uh, one more item, which, you know, financially will be tough, but not impossible. Okay. I do appreciate the bomb refund at least. So let's go peep our shop. The, probably the most likely way is a second secret room, to be honest. So we should, in my opinion, you know, lean heavily on that right now. And, uh, I, you know what? Much more valuable, I think, for us right now to take what I would describe as probably, I don't know, like a 65% chance to get an HP upgrade. Um, instead of... Leaning on the shop to try to pick up something. Oh my god. Oh my god. So, we could probably afford to play the Blood Bank uh, and, and get stuff back. Very nice as well. But, I don't think that the juice is worth the squeeze in that situation. Because what do we want from the Blood Bank? More money? Yeah, we, we would like more money, of course. However, uh... Am I willing to... I mean, this life is now the most valuable life, for sure. I can't believe it. We might be closing in. Uh, and just remember, you, you should be using um, wooden nickel now as you enter a room instead of as you leave. Because we are at uh, 2 HP. So we can always get the refund on a room. Um, anyway, what, was, what I was going to say is we're close to the point where uh, we could banter on a keeper run. Doesn't happen very often. And I have to say, it it does come down to, uh... Oh, that's so good, too. It does come down to that, uh, that gift play. Which, I mean, turned out very lucky for us. You, you don't need me to tell you how many absolutely horrible, uh... Deals with the devil are in the pool. The answer is a lot. But this is not only a good item, but an item on top of that that is, uh... 
extremely useful as the keeper. So, like, right now, we are in cruise control. And that's a great reminder that even being in cruise control, one bad room can have you on the outs, or, or even just one bad uh, move can have you on the outs real quick. So, stay frosty here. Um, honestly... Hive Mind is probably pretty close to being a, a straight purchase just because of the fact we're going to get a lot of flies and spiders being the keeper in general. Um, but I would suggest that maybe, and I, I'm not trying to, I, I hate when people game theory for no reason. I, I find it so annoying when people, like I've been listening to this uh, audiobook. Oh, excuse me, I have a delivery. One moment, please. I'll level with you, that one might not need an edit. It's pretty quick. <laughs> but I've been listening to this audiobook uh, lately. And hold on, before we get into that, let's, let's solve this problem. I think we pop this, and then we say Hive Mind is fine. But I was going to say, the, the game theory involved is maybe we should use all of our resources. Yo, that's so good. To just fish for, like, piggy bank car battery and stuff that is, like, obviously, you know, extremely great. And, and has a better chance to have an impact on the run. But I think this is this is totally fine. We also have a weird little uh, pressure point here we can lean on. But I've been listening to this audiobook, and it's called uh, Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. And it's, it's just a book about, essentially, uh, psychology. And the psychology of, uh, you know, decision-making processes. Uh. I'm willing to go a little deep on this one. I think we want, uh. and that you might be spiced out of your mind here in just a second. I don't think we want two level four meat boys, but I do think we would like a level four meat boy and an orbital. And then we can grab this again. And we, we got a nice damage upgrade out of that as well. Um, and now we have three lives left, but we're spending our lives in a good fashion. <laughs> and, and honestly, the book is... I, I, I don't know whether it's good in the sense that it's, like, vettable, but it, it, it has been doing a good job of making me, you know, think about the stuff that it's talking about. But one of the things that's most annoying for me is when it talks in, like, an, an economic context for uh, decisions that human beings make. And I'm just, like, like everything... And, and to be fair, the book... I don't want to paint it as if the author is saying that this is a, a valid position. But I, I find this, you know, I, I'm not like an economics expert, obviously. But whenever people talk about like the way that you should behave, they always assume that like the average person um, should dictate their life based on like mathematical principles or combinatronics. Like, for example, which would you prefer? A 100% uh, a chance to get $900 right now or a 95% uh, chance to get $1,100. Rational, you know, robotics, AI, etc., etc., and people that wish they were computers would tell you that the most sensible approach from an expected value standpoint is uh, you, you take a slightly lower chance to get way disproportionately uh, more money However, I think most human beings are kind of like, you know, the difference between... And, and again, this book actually specifically talks about this, so I, I'm, I don't mean to suggest that the, uh, the author is suggesting that you are a fool if you take the guaranteed 900. But, um, you know, the difference between 900 bucks and 1200 bucks, let's say, is not necessarily that uh, transformative. The difference between $0 and $900 is a huge 
It's a huge thing. You know, it. I've, I, I. Sometimes when I've been listening to this book, I've had. It, it's like being seen for the first time because I always bring up this story from like ten years ago, where this guy in England um, took. He, he had a hundred, roughly a hundred thousand U.S. dollars in his life savings, and uh, he took it out, bet it all on black at the casino on the roulette table and won. So he won like 197,000 or whatever. And when people interviewed him, cause it's kind of audacious. And he was like, yeah, you know, I just, I felt kind of stuck in my life. So I thought, hey, why don't we take like my entire life? And uh, you know, if we lose it, no big loss. And if we win, that's amazing. And I'm like, man, this guy has like the exact opposite mindset of, uh, of me because the difference between having a hundred grand in the bank and two hundred grand is not insignificant, but probably doesn't affect your quality of life all that much. The difference between having a hundred thousand dollars in the bank and zero is <laughs> incredible. <laughs> and but I was stunned at the number of people who were like, "Wow, what a legend!" Whoa, goals! Is what do you mean goals? Not goals. Anyway. Where was I talking? Oh, so that, I was going to talk about the game theory stuff. Because, like... Honestly, the it's not like the Uno tournament got me tilted. Um, but it's just... it Like, I was the heel in that Twitch Rivals Uno tournament. And I accept that for entertainment value. And the amount of, like, prize money on the table was was not enough for anybody to, like, lose sleep over that was involved in the tournament, right? I hope, at least. Um... If it was, take your winnings, bet it all on black, apparently. <laughs> What's the loss? But anyway, um, I, but I, I still sometimes, I'm like, do you really derive satisfaction out of basing, like, every decision in your life on game theory? Like, I would 100% take the, I'll take the guaranteed money with a lower payout any day of the week. Even if it is deemed as irrational by economists or whatever. That's so bad, dude, to lose that life on this room. Very disappointing. Oh, this room has already been completed. But don't don't lose any degree of hope yet. Because we still have two item rooms, which is very comical to me. We still have two item rooms and a shop, which is... No. <laughs> Which is almost unbelievable to me. Because we've done so much of this floor. You, you gotta think, if we did this floor in a different, you know, room order, probably be in a little bit of a better situation right now. But, you know, them's the breaks. Okay, hold on. When I bantered, things started to go wrong. Spoonbender is incredible. Um, this does not feel like a boss path to me, so... Look, let me level with you. On one HP, we can win this run. However, it's tough. Because there are so many rooms where, you know, things could go slightly wrong. And and cause a, a bit of a tizzy. So I don't mind this so far. Um, we have a 36% chance of a deal with the devil. We have eight bombs. I'm just taking a little audit of our resources right now. Basically looking for, like, I mean, what matters to us right now? An emperor card. Matters a great deal. At this point, my pride will not let me lose this run. Because, and I, I'm going to hope that that holds true. Uh, judgment? Oh, yo, yo, yo. Real judgment, you coward. I needed a real judgment. Hold on. This, this, this is a very pivotal moment in, in our lives. You love to see that. I think we love to see that. All we have to do is not get hit next floor to make that work. Um, yeah, I forgot what I was talking about. Anyway, let's focus on Isaac. 
<laughs> Stay fresh here. Come on. I mean, I, like, I... It's so... It's so... Thank you. I really appreciate giving me something here. Um, do not... Do not take the Joker card yet. Uh, there's, there's, there's plays there. Like, if we get, uh, Dark Judas, we're good. I have no idea, and, and this is where my Isaac knowledge comes back to bite me a little bit. What if we get, like, Abaddon? I don't, I don't have an answer for you. No, thank you. The reason I said I w my pride won't let me uh, lose this one is because I'm like... It's nice, at least. We l threw five lives... Well, I, think, I guess we threw four lives away. Just to get these meat boys going for us. Which, in hindsight is looking somewhat hubris filled. <laughs> because we're on 1 HP, I'll take a pill. Duly noted. Duly noted. Okay, we've been to both of our item rooms. Got a Joker card. This is where things get exciting. First off, it's Gish. That's a very bad roll for us. Because we will not get HP. And there is no, like, Perthro rune or anything. Um... I'm just going to be quiet for a bit. Very nice. I think we should um, take the Polaroid, obviously. I think we should Joker. Knew this was a possibility. And it, it, it worked out just fine. Take me down. Who? <laughs> I, I think you throw caution to the wind to some extent. I can see forever. All right. This is just a, it's just a dangerous room. Because these enemies are so annoying when they die. Um, and we'll just try to speed through the process here it's it's all target selection baby we're only one hp upgrade away from feeling like we're in a pretty okay spot so it's definitely like i would not be too uh nervous about the situation and this is a very very powerful run Just got to be so careful about, like... Because if we get hit once, it's... We're, we're officially in the danger zone. Where one hit puts us into, you know, threat level crimson. I.e. we're dead. <laughs> so we really, really... Need to be sensible. I'm just not confident on that room. Remember, underconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Excuse me, by the way, where's my Maggie's Faith payout? Balls of space lags. Sure, oh no. <laughs> I'm excited is a very bad roll for us. It's, when times get tough, there's only one rule, and the rule is, it's always the matriarch, dude. And that's fair. Honestly, I hate that we lost there, and our, our streak is over, and we shouldn't have, but I, I at least think it wasn't entirely the fault of Potato Peeler. The Matriarch is a is a streak killer. That's its role, and it plays it well. 
For now, thanks for watching. It hurts me a great deal, but here we are. If you enjoyed it, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. See ya!